So, good day everyone. This is Jessica Marie M. Lord is from BS Electronics, ECE, BS Electronics Engineering 3A. And in this video, we are going to talk about non-orthogonal multiple access or NOMA. So, what we're going to talk about is about what is NOMA, performance of NOMA, and also the summary. So, in this juncture, we're going to talk about the topic, what is NOMA. So, basically, what is NOMA? Non-orthogonal multiple access or non-orthogonal multiple access is one of the most promising radio access techniques in next-generation wireless communication compared to orthogonal frequency division multiple access or OFDMA which is the current de facto standard orthogonal multiple access OMA technique or NOMA offers a set of desirable potential benefits such as enhanced spectrum efficiency, reduced latency with higher reliability and massive connectivity. The baseline idea of NOMA is to serve multiple users using the, the same resource in terms of time, frequency, and space. So this is the key points, the baseline of the idea of of non-autodongal multiple access is to serve multiple users using the same resource in terms of mo of time, frequency, and space. Now, so in power domain NOMA, the performance gain relative to orthogonal MA increases when the difference in channel gains, for example, path loss between UES is large. So the uplink capacity can be calculated in a similar manner as the downlink, although the, for the formula is somewhat different, defining and as received powers at the base station from UEI and UE2 respectively. The rate of each user in the case of non orthogonal uplink access can be written as follow. That's it. If you see there. Yeah. So, in short, multiplayer NOMA can be viewed as the variation of NOMA where the users in network are divided into multiple groups. The users in each group are served in same orthodontical resources block following the NOMA principle and different groups are allocated different orthodontical resources blocks. So, in one resource, then there are the users. That is the, the use of et NOMA. So, the motivation of employing hybrid NOMA is to reduce the system complexity. For example, assigning all the users in the network to a single group for the implementation of NOMA in one orthodontal resource block is problematic. Since the user having the best channel condition will have to decode all the other user's messages before decoding its own message, which results in high complexity and high decoding lately. Hybrid NOMA is an effective approach to make a trade-off between systems and performance and complexity. Let's consider multi-career NOMA as example. The users, as are, the users in the cell are divided into multiple groups which are not necessarily mutually exclusive. The users within the one group are assigned to the same sub-carrier and intra-group interference is mi mitigated using NOMA principle. Different groups of users are assigned different sub-carriers which the which effectively avoids intergroup interference as a result overloading the system which is necessary in order to support more users than the number of available sub and is required to enable massive connectivity can be realized by the hybrid NOMA scheme. It is noted that with hybrid NOMA, overloading is realized at the reduced complexity since the number of users assigned each sub is limited. So limited lang siya. Then, the performance of NOMA. So, I am comparing or contra contrasting the orthogonal and non-orthogonal. So, NOMA is non-orthogonal. So, here it is. Orthogonal is said when two transmissions have no such influence in each other. Orthogonality is achieved by time, space, frequency, and code. The phase difference of both transmissions should be 90 degrees. So, in non-orthogonal naman is 
with Noma, unlike orthogonal, it has multiple axes as what I can say earlier. It allows sharing the same frequency resource at the same time by implementing adaptive power allocation. And a non-orthogonal transmission is not sensitive to errors of synchronization. When a carrier is used in non-orthogonal transmission, then in this case, the signaling becomes more efficient than orthogonal one. And here in this picture below, I will show you the contrast of NOMA and OMA. So in full form, non-orthogonal multiple access, there's meaning and orthogonal multiple access. So in the receiver complexity, the NOMA is high while the OMA is low. In energy consumption, the NOMA is more has more energy consumption than OMA. The number of users cluster, NOMA has lower and the OMA has higher. So sa OMA hindi siya limited while in NOMA limited siya. The number of user pairs, the NOMA is less and the OMA is more. And the system through throughput, assumption user pair is inverted, NOMA is larger and the OMA is um, simple more complex than OMA than sa NOMA because NOMA has a lower and limited number of users. And next. So, so, in the performance of NOMA. So, in this juncture, we are going to talk about the performance of NOMA in transmit side and receive side. So, first, there are two main techniques employed in NOMA for multiple access. Power domain. In power domain, NOMA achieves multiplexing based on different power levels. And in code domain, NOMA achieves multiplexing based on different codes. And while next to the transit side, NOMA uses superposition position coding and the transmitter end, and the different power levels have been assigned to user. So as shown in the figure, I will show you later. The base station transmits superposed signals to user number 1 and user number 2. Here, user number 2 uses high gain and user number 1 uses low gain as shown. This is the... Here, diba? My user number 1 and user number 2. Then, in the same side, NOMA uses SIC, Successive Interference Cancellation Technique, to receive or to retrieve data of both the users. So at the receiver, user number two, strong user, subtracts signals of user number one through SIC and lately decodes its own signal. User number one, weak user, treats signal of user number two as noise and decodes its own signal directly. So I'm on the D. Here, as you can see here, the power ka user number two in the in the graph in above here is more high than user number one and the the, the time and frequency is also is also but it's diff is the same in user number two and user number one wherein the user number one signal is decoding in the user number two subtract user's number one signal and user number two signal is decoding so baga kung isipo natin ang user number two is like the admin or the main ang the first user and while may nag add may nag add nga may nag add nga mga user nag aamag gagamay man gagamay ang mga signal na so in noma downlink the base station is super reimposes the information waveforms for its service users each user's equipment ua employs sic to detect their own signal figure shows at a bs and k number of us with sic receiver in the network is assumed that the ue1 is the closest to the base station bs and uk is the farthest so Summary. In my summary, since the principle of NOMA allows multiple users to be super, superimposed on the same resource, this leads to interference for such systems. Consequently, existing resource management with interference mitigation techniques, especially for ultra-dense networks, need to be revisited due to the incorporation of additional interferences this new technology brings. For similar reasons, beamforming and the resultant other problems like precoding in massive MIMO system introduce additional challenges and need to be solved in order to achieve full utilization for these technologies. From this perspective of physical layer, existing channel coding, modulation, and estimation related to problems need to be revised as well. So that's all, I think.
and once again this is Jessica Marie I'm Nortiza from BS Electronics Engineering 3A and this is M11 ECE23 titled non-orthogonal multiple access or NOMA.